Hello, in this video, we're going to find the limit as x approaches one from the right of the square root of x squared minus one quantity cubed, all being divided by x squared minus x. Whenever we're looking for limits, the first thing we should do is take this number here and plug it in and see what happens. If we do that, we can see that we get one squared minus one in the numerator. We basically get zero because we get the square root of zero. And in the denominator, we get one minus one, so we also get zero. So we get zero over zero, so this is not a good approach. So we're going to take a different approach. Let's go ahead and carefully work through this solution. Right away, you can see there's a lot of factoring that can be done. In the numerator, x squared minus one is the difference of squares. And in the denominator, we can pull out an x. So let's go ahead and do all of that. This is the limit as x approaches one from the right of the square root of. So we know x squared minus one can be written as x minus one times x plus one. So if we're cubing this, we're basically cubing this product. And when you do that, you can cube each factor. So this is going to be parentheses x minus one cubed times x plus one cubed. And in the denominator, we can pull out the x. So we have x parentheses x minus one. So our goal here is to cancel this x minus one, but we need to be careful how we do it because we, we need to get rid of the square root. So that's where this one-sided limit is going to come into play. So watch this. This is equal to the limit as x approaches one from the right. And so now what we can do here is we can write it as follows. This is the square root of x minus one squared x plus one cubed times the square root of x minus one x plus one. And all of this is being divided by would be a two there. All of this should be divided by x times x minus one. So this works because if you multiply x minus one times x minus one squared, you get x minus one cubed. Likewise, x plus one to the first power times x plus one to the second power gives you x plus one to the third power. And the reason I did this is because when we take the square root of this, when you take the square root of x minus one squared, you actually get the absolute value of x minus one, okay? That's where this comes into play because you've got x approaching one from the right. That means that x is bigger than one. So that means that x minus one is bigger than zero. That means that the absolute value of x minus one is just x minus one. So the square root of x minus one squared is just x minus one. You don't have to worry about the absolute value. So that's why this is here, so that you can you know, navigate that. It's really sneaky and it's something that you might not notice. This is equal to the limit as x approaches one from the right. So now we can free these from the square root. We'll just get x minus one, x plus one. Again, normally it's absolute value of x minus one, right? But we know x is bigger than that. Also, if you're wondering about x plus one squared, well, if x is bigger than one, it's certainly bigger than negative one. So x plus one is also positive. So the absolute value of x plus one is just x plus one. So you don't need absolute values anywhere here. And then here we have the square root of, parentheses x minus one, x plus one. On the bottom we have x and then x minus one. So it's kind of delicate, right? It's a really delicate thing that you might not notice, but very important to know that, right? If you take the square root of x squared, that's equal to the absolute value of x. All right, finally, these go away. We can rejoice. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches one from the right. And then we have x plus one square root. And we have x minus one x plus one, all of this is being divided by x. So now we can plug in the one here. And what's gonna happen is we're just gonna get one plus one, which is two, and then check this out. One minus one is zero. So this whole thing is gonna be the square root of zero. 
and here we have our one. Square root of zero is zero, so you just get two times zero over one. You get zero over one, so you just get zero as the final answer. So kind of a, uh, it's not really a hard problem uh, because I think a lot of people would do this and perhaps they wouldn't think about the absolute value, but you still have to get rid of the square root in order to cancel. So you still have to do this funny factoring and then take the square root of x minus one squared and realize that it's x minus one. Uh, but it's really the absolute value of x minus one again. And since x is approaching one from the right, x is bigger than one, so x minus one is bigger than zero. Well, the absolute value of x minus one is just x minus one. So subtleties in mathematics. Hopefully you've learned the mathematics in this video. Until next time, good luck.